Welcome. So yesterday my sister came in and she was telling me about a sermon that she was watching and how the pastor was saying to the congregation how they only come in on a Sunday, but they're not spending any time with the Lord throughout the week. And would they do their spouses this way? Now, even though it sounds good, and I understand it because I've heard it many times over, and I think at even some point I may have agreed with it. (laughs) But as I'm listening to it, I'm thinking, if they're not spending time, not saying that it's the pastor's fault or obligation, but he is the one that is supposed to be expounding the beauty of Christ to let these people know how close they are with God, revealing the work of Christ. And the more that you see him and you see how lovely he is, You enjoy him in the process because he's always present, whether you acknowledge him or not. Not saying that it's his responsibility, but feed the people, don't beat them. (laughs) But now if you were to ask me today how I view that, I see it in a totally different light only because I've been there before. If you came to me, and I know you as a loyal friend, and you're telling me, girl, I met this guy He is all of that. And you start telling me all about how magnificent this guy is. And I want you to meet him. Okay. I meet him. On the first date, I'm not going to tell this man that I love him because I don't know him. A week into it, I'm not going to tell him that I love him because I still don't know him. A month from now, I'm not going to tell him that I love him because I still don't know him. At some point, I may like you. But to tell you that I love you, I'm, yeah, that's not, that, that's not going to happen. And if I can see that from a carnal point of view, how much more when it comes to the things of God? Now, I know that it sounds kind of off, like, you know, you're supposed to love God. Like, you have to tell him that you love him. I get that. But what I learned is that he's not offended by where I'm at. And the reason why I know this is because he dealt with me personally on it. I would say, you know, Jesus, I love you. But in my heart, not that I questioned it, but I didn't feel like it was coming from a sincere place. Like I felt like I was saying it because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to tell God that you love him because he's God. But then so sweetly, he said to me, you know, you don't have to do that. Like I'm confident in who I am. I'm confident of the love that I have implanted in you. The real part of you absolutely loves me because it's born of me. But if you would just let me love you in return, love will blossom. So instead of you trying to muster up this strength to tell me that you love me, why don't you flip it and just say, Lord, I love the way you love me. And I was like, that I can, I can do that. Because I do. I mean, I see your kindness all the time. And you're so good to me. I love the way that you love me. And it became easy. When he would show kindness to me or I would find favor or as he was revealing himself in the scriptures, I mean, I would just be blown away and I'd be like, Lord, I love the way you love me. (laughs) Oh, I love the way you love me. I love the way you love me. And that went on for months. And then one day, out of the depths of my soul, It finally clicked for me. It moved from the true part of me, my spirit man, and worked its way into my thoughts and my emotions. And I found myself saying to him, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And it was sincere. And it still is till this day. There's there's times where he totally rocks me and I'm just like, Lord, (laughs) I absolutely love you. But it's not anything forced. It reminds me of something that I read in a book uh, from Charles Spurgeon. And he was talking about the promises of God. And he was saying, it's hard to receive promises without understanding the promise giver. It's hard for you to say that you love God without having any knowledge of Him. How can you love what you don't know? It just doesn't make sense. Our love grows as our knowledge and our understanding of who God truly is grows. But apart from that, I mean, you can say it, but do you really mean it? (laughs) You know, and it's not to kick people because, again, the real part of them, their spirit man, once they have received Christ, is born of love. 
It tells us that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. So we do love Him. It even says in the Word of God that our spirit crying out, Abba, Father. That's the truth about us. So if you're in a place to where you feel like, I want to love God, but I don't feel like it's sincere, the real part of you that is born of God absolutely loves Him. That's the truth. Now it has to work its way into your soul, and that's okay. God is, is, is very, very patient. He's very gentle. He's a gentleman. And He's confident in what He does. So just embrace His love for you, and you will find that eventually that love will blossom. So let's feed people. Let's not beat them for where they are. Continue to unveil the beauty and the loveliness and the surety that we have in Christ Jesus. And just watch how the Holy Spirit works. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Um, let's not beat people, but let's feed them, unveiling the loveliness of Christ. And the more that they see how God so loved them, love will come and it will it's already implanted in them. They were born out of love, but it's revealing what has been done in their spirit and letting their soul really grab hold of that. So that's all that I want to say for today. Uh, I know that you have been blessed in your hearing and remember, Today is the day of salvation, the year of the Lord's favor. Bride of Christ, arise. Mm -hmm.